Good evening and welcome everyone to the 2021 annual meeting of your Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. I'm Allison Burr Livingstone, the BSO's Vice President and Chief Advancement Officer. I am so pleased uh, to share that whether you are joining us here in the Meyerhof or tuning in on live via YouTube, that you are here because you're a supporter of this institution. I'm also pleased to share that you were in good and expanded company. In a season of all virtual programming, we welcomed 1,140 new donors to the BSO. That includes a 7% growth in membership. And in fact, that is just one piece of the philanthropic picture of this past year. A further 1,600 subscriber households donated all of their impacted tickets outright. So they are also part of our donor family. That also deserves a round of applause. We are committed to honoring your collective investments in the BSO's music, education programs, and cultural leadership, including moments such as these, to expand on the impact of your generosity with candor and transparency. This evening, you will hear from board leadership on the state of the orchestra, as well as meet the newest members of the board of directors. We are gonna look back at the year just finished by unveiling our annual review, and we are gonna go behind the scenes of the season of discovery underway, as well as look at our strategic priorities for the year ahead and the years beyond. But first, it is tradition at the BSO to start with a thing that brings us all together, music. Uh, I am delighted that we are joined today by members of the violin section performing works by two, uh, works for two violins by Prokofiev and Joseph Ballone Chevalier de Saint-Georges. Uh, please enjoy this exclusive performance by Holly Jenkins, holder of the Paul and Amy Sponsiller Chair and Julian Maddox, a 2021 Sphinx Orchestral Partnership Auditions Competition finalist and a new one-year member of the BSO for the 21-22 season. Holly and Julian. Obviously, I'm not Julian. Um, we are very excited to share some music with you today. The first thing we're playing is um, the first movement from Prokofiev's Sonata for Two Violins. Um, it's a little bit wandering, a little bit beautiful, a little bit different to the ear. And then Julian will explain the balloon to you. Um, I'm really excited that you guys are getting to hear him for the first time. I had the honor of being on his committee and I will tell you, it was an easy hire. He is a lovely new addition, and we're very excited to welcome him to our family.
I just want to say thank you. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is such a wonderful opportunity for me. I can't be more thrilled to be joining the BSO family in this wonderful culture and community for the 21-22 season. Uh, thanks to Holly for putting up with me tonight. <laughs> and I want to tell you now about the next piece, which is the Sonata two, for Two Violins by Joseph Bourdon. Uh, his title actually was Chevalier de Saint-Georges. He was a French composer of African descent, and in fact, one of the first black composers uh, in the Western traditional canon that we are used to. Of course, his music was suppressed, but he was quite prominent in his day in that he and Mozart met uh, in England at one point, and not only did Mozart have influence on Bologna, but Bologna had influence on Mozart. So that can tell you a bit the uh, significance that he holds in, in our space. And I think it's so exciting. Uh, I'm, I'm very humbled as a musician of color myself to have this opportunity uh, to share this music with you all, and we hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's a short movement. Uh, you'll notice perhaps one of the two parts is a bit more virtuosic, as St. George himself was a... Uh, <laughs> very, very talented violinist and champion fencer, among many things. Uh, you, can, you can see the major film that will be in development. He's, uh, his story is pretty incredible, so naturally it'll be a movie soon. Uh, but please, enjoy Joseph Villon, Chevalier de Saint-Georges, mouthful, Sonata for Two Violins in B-flat major.
Let's do another round of applause. That was terrific. Thank you. Uh, my name is Barry Rosen. I'm the chairman of the board of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, and I'm uh, honored and privileged to uh, hold that position. And on behalf of all of the board members of the BSO, I'm here first to say thank you. Thank you for your uh, support, uh, your past support, your current support, and of course your uh, future support. Without your support, none of this, uh, none of this uh, works. <clears throat> in, um, in 2019, uh, we started on a uh, journey, one of the most recent journeys for the, for the BSO. We adopted a new strategic plan, uh, and inside that plan was a simple uh, concept, a circle or a cycle, uh, with Michael Kaiser's uh, uh, help. Uh, it is first to put, uh, present great uh, art. It's then to uh, communicate that uh, what we're doing uh, about great art to all of our communities to engage with our uh, communities, and because of that, to, uh, uh, to get support from those communities, which brings the circle uh, back to the top, to which will allow us to present great, uh, uh, great art. As uh, soon as we adopted the, uh, uh, the new strategic plan, uh, we started um, on a uh, collecting an extraordinary transformation fund, and we had great uh, success, and that goes on and is ongoing today. Of course, uh, a month or two later, the pandemic uh, hit, uh, and we stopped uh, presenting uh, concerts in this hall or at Strathmore. Uh, during that uh, period, when the pandemic first uh, began, uh, we were negotiating with our musicians, and thankfully the result of that is a historic five-year collective bargaining agreement. We have been going from year to year to year. We now have a five-year runway where we know exactly what's uh, happening. Uh, a great uh, accomplishment, both management and board, and especially the, the musicians. Um, uh, during this pandemic uh, period, there was shared sacrifice uh, built into that five-year uh, agreement in that first year, but there was also progress. Uh, things occurred. We had wonderful support from uh, donors and put cameras in the hall. We launched a digital series that allows us to do exactly what that circle asked us to do, which is continue to engage with our um, audiences. We also got terrific support federal support from PPP and Shuttered Venue, wonderful support from the Maryland General Assembly and, and our governor, uh, which will allow us now uh, to uh, launch the new season as we have in a strong financial position, but of course at a very difficult time. Those of you who have already been to concerts know people are wearing uh, masks. This is a difficult time to start. Uh, where there are also some labor negotiations going on at Strathmore, which has inhibited our ability to launch the season at our second home. Hopefully that will resolve itself quickly, but these are challenges uh, for us. Uh, each time my, my son uh, would, would, would run into an obstacle for himself, we tell him, oh, it's character building is what, is what it is. Uh, well, this is character building for us, too. <laughs> and, and we're going to get through this, but very much with your, with your support. Uh, one of those um, uh, character building uh, pieces, I want to share with you something that was just adopted a few hours ago. We had a board meeting uh, earlier uh, this afternoon. And all organizations have mission statements. We have a mission statement here at the BSO. Most of them are pretty generic and not particularly inspiring. Therefore, I think it's important to, for people not, or organizations not only to have a mission statement, but to have a value statement, a statement where they say what their values are and that they live those uh, values. Again, through a very collaborative process, board, management, uh, staff, uh, musicians, uh, uh, the BSO adopted just a few hours ago the BSO uh, creed, our value statement, and it is an acronym, uh, and it is cleverly, the, uh, the acronym is CREED, C-R-E-E-D, and I do want to share it uh, with you. The first is, the C is creativity, 
We believe the BSO is first and foremost an artistic institution that is dedicated to the finest creative musical expression. Uh, R is for respect. We believe the BSO should value, appreciate, and treat all individuals, patrons, staff, musicians, guest artists, volunteers, with compassion, respect, and dignity. Um, this is uh, this respect, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, E is excellence. Uh, it, we need to attract, develop, and retain the best talent uh, throughout the uh, organization. Excellence also means meeting the highest ethical uh, standards and always being transparent. It's important for us, for all, us always to tell you what's going on, the good, the bad, and the challenging. Uh, e is for uh, engagement and education. We obviously have to engage with our community, and it's important for us to meet our education mission at all ages, for adults uh, and, and for kids. And the D is diversity. We believe in diversity, equality, inclusion, and belonging. Uh, it's easy to talk the talk. Clearly, there will be a, a plaque put up in this auditorium and at Strathmore, which will lay out the creed. But it's important for all of us to walk the talk. And I really mean all of us. It's board members and staff and musicians and, and all of you. It will make, it'll differentiate this organization from other organizations if we make these values come alive. Uh, other business uh, that was uh, taken care of uh, uh, today at the earlier uh, board meeting, those, some of you may remember that historically the board was actually elected by the governing members, uh, that we would have an electronic poll, and it was actually very hard. We always had to get a quorum of 100 people to push the electronic uh, button, as it actually is hard to do. So we streamlined and became a little more uh, modern, and now the board actually is self-perpetuating, and it does elect itself. And today, uh, we re-elected uh, to another three-year term, Chuck Alston, Rick Bernstein, Walter Doggett, Joe Jennings, Mark Lackridge, uh, Jim Smith, and Peter Winnick. And we also elected three new board members, Cappy Bogart, Doug Hamilton, and Jason uh, Perry. And uh, I believe Doug and Jason may be in the audience today, but uh, I, let's give everybody a hand for their future service. I, I believe my job was to present the business part of the, uh, of the uh, agenda. I have uh, done that, and I believe I'm to turn this over to uh, Allison. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Barry. Um, the business part done, the other order of agenda is to look back at the year just finished, because it was an amazing year, despite being largely all virtual. Um, in that spirit today, we are pleased to release our 2020 to 21 year in review, our second such annual holistic report on the state of the BSO and the programs made possible by your support. This is now available online at the address on your screen, and I certainly hope that you will download it, read it, and take great pride. Uh, detailed in these pages are stories and statistics, some of which you may know, but others I am sure will surprise you. I'm going to highlight just a few today. This includes a check-in on the big picture. As Barry noted, several years ago, we started out on a journey. We had a five-year strategic plan, and in that plan, we outlined 10 strategic action items. We have been following those with great fortitude. Those include longer lead artistic planning, deeper community engagement and education, an enhanced patron experience, expanded statewide service, investments in marketing, staffing, and fundraising, board development, which clearly we reported on already today, an embracing of technology, and a CBA that supports our incredible musicians, as well as innovation. Highlights of the BSO's artistic, education, and engagement initiatives are also featured, including the incredible reaction to BSO sessions. 30 episodes in sessions pilot seasons were viewed by more than 18,000 viewers in 49 states and 32 countries. Sessions were among the content on BSO Offstage that also attracted 4,200 registered users. 45% of those users were brand new to the BSO family, and that is an amazing thing. 
We also outline education programs that continued to inspire, entertain, and educate, as well as to provide teachers and families and everyone serving in the role of teacher during a virtual learning experience uh, to navigate those challenges in turn. In total, the BSO still served an estimated 25,000 students of all ages. The widest reaching certainly remaining are midweek education concert series, BGE broadcast this past year, four programs representative of four instrument families captured from the Meyerhoff Hall and that we estimate were viewed more than 19,000 times in homes and virtual classrooms across the state and far beyond. Speaking of education, let me reaffirm that ORCIDS remained the BSO's most intensive and immersive initiative, as well as a respected leader in learning through the time of COVID. In total, ORCID served 211 students during its after-school program and made in-school programming accessible to more than 1,100 students across nine Baltimore City public schools. More information about virtual and hybrid summer programming are detailed in this report, as are examples of several partnerships enabling ORCIDs to continue to serve the whole student and their families uh, facing uh, challenges uh, through the pandemic. And I really hope that you will pay attention to this page in turn. Of course, we also recap our season-long celebration of music director Marin Alsop, including the reach of major media partnerships, such as those with WBJC, WBJC Radio and MPT. Um, and of course, that means the culminating moment of our Marin Festival, um, our live broadcast in turn. We also break down the incredible media coverage secured throughout the year, drawing attention to our programming, turnaround and thought leadership, and the nearly 500,000 known listeners and viewers by BSO program, be it on air, online, uh, in common rooms, at senior communities across the state, and thankfully, in person. That is the story of 2020 to 21, that by acting with great intentionality for the health and security of our BSO family, for voices represented on our pro podium, programs, and stages, for the needs of our patrons and our community at large, and for sustainability today and tomorrow, we reached more Marylanders and listeners throughout the world when it mattered the most. I encourage you to read this publication to find your own names listed among our donor roll at your leisure. Rather than spend the balance of our time reflecting back, I very much encourage us to look forward. So as such, I want to welcome uh, BSO Vice President Chief Operating Officer Tanya Robles to the podium. Tanya. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Barry, and thank you to the entire BSO family. Our 21-22 season of discovery is well underway, and it is already proven to be a season full of milestones. Earlier this month, our new artistic advisor, James Conlon, made his BSO debut. And this very weekend, we will welcome back Maestra Alsop to the podium in her inaugural concerts as our music director laureate. I'm also excited to share that while Marin is in town, the orchestra will be putting the finishing touches on a recording of Anna Klein's music, including several BSO commis commissions. We're also working on a collection of works by Baltimore's own Kevin Putz to be released on the Naxos label. The weeks ahead include programs fully representative of our theme of diversity, discovery. We will welcome the world's top talents to our stages in exciting programs that will thrill audiences. Highlights include Renee Fleming and Rod Guilfrey's performance of Kevin Putz's The Brightness of Light, a multimedia presentation depicting the story and visual works of Georgia O'Keeffe and Alfred Sticklitz, and Baltimore's own Grammy, Emmy, Tony Award winning Andre de Shields in a self-described love story to Baltimore program. We will introduce new voices on the stage, score, and podium, such as Isata Kane Mason, performing Clara Schumann's Piano Concerto in a dual BSO debut. A member of the prodigiously talented Kane Mason family, Isata devoted her first album to the works of Clara Schumann and her story. Clara Schumann is an artist who paved the way for subsequent generations of women performers and women composers as well, but her work is all too often overlooked. And finally, we will challenge perceptions about all genres of music, including the launch of a new series, BSO Fusion, with Steve Hackman, incorporating lessons learned from the Pulse series, like our audience's desire to see the full orchestra and experience that power, 
Hackman literally fuses musical genres. Think Mars from the Planets and the finale of Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony played in their original form, then remixed and combined with electronic beats, layered with vocal stems of today's artists, including Post Malone, Muse, Drake, and Kanye West. Hackman, together with BSO artistic partner Wordsmith, will be rolling out Fusion around town the last week of October, that's next week, in a series of pop-ups. Watch the BSO's social media, media channels for more details. I hope you will join us for these and many more moments as we all continue to discover what it means to be together again. Because as five standing ovations on opening night last month and robust applause at each concert so far, no matter the size of the audience has revealed, it is an emotional, soul-stirring thing to be back experiencing live music after so many months apart. But we know that everyone's journey back to the hall is different. And that's why we are not only upholding, but also expanding digital points of access for those not quite ready to return and for new audiences alike. BSO Offstage is back and better than ever. And if you haven't experienced our new live stream concerts, you have yet another reason to register and log on. BSO Sessions, our groundbreaking docuseries, is back for a second season. Episode one features Dahlia Stasevska, and it will be released tomorrow. Let's take a sneak peek. My recipe is always just to be yourself, you know, I, I, I don't add or take away anything, I just come as I am. The BSO is kind of a very finely tuned Ferrari and, you know, if you just put anyone behind the seat, uh, in the driving seat, they're not going to know what to do with it and not going to know how to push it to its potential and she knows that and she immediately, immediately took control of the vehicle and you know, when I say like, you know, how tight can you turn that corner? She knows exactly how far to go before, you know, things fall apart. Symbols be the same like in the beginning. So if there's a wha, wha, that, that's kind of like a wind. If you were fortunate enough to be here that week, you can attest to the electricity that was in the hall. It was a phenomenal way to start a music director search. So this entire second season of BSO Sessions will chronicle the first year in our music director search with 14 episodes dedicated to each of our 14 guest conductors and potential candidates on the classical series. And with so much talent to look forward to this season, it's hard to believe that we have more than a half dozen other new potential candidates already lined up for the 2022-23 season ahead. And with guidance from a leading artistic planning consultant, the search committee composed of musicians, board, management, and community leadership is energized, excited, and optimistic about the task before us. Orchestra surveys coordinated through the Artistic Advisory Committee and comprehensive points of engagement by donors and patrons alike, from sessions to post-concert conversations and more, all are in place to help us evaluate potential candidates both on and off the podium. And since this search is a two-way process, I ask you to help us showcase the best of the BSO in your attendance, applause, and engagement. Speaking of long lead artistic planning, we are also excited to launch the BSO's Music of Maryland tour, complete with performances and residency throughout the state beginning 
the summer of 2022. Formal plans will be announced later, but I'll let you in on a secret. We plan to launch, launch this multi-year effort alongside the opening of an exciting new concert hall in Western Maryland, so stay tuned. And while the summer is an ideal time to travel farther afield, we are also planning more intentional engagement closer to home all season long. Beginning in February, we'll be bringing back the Symphony in the City series, our free community-based programs with at least three Baltimore and one Montgomery County dates. I encourage you to visit bsomusic.org for the latest on all these initiatives and more, including a new era of volunteerism at the BSO. Building on the rich history of the Baltimore Symphony Associates, a new program is currently in its soft launch phase with opportunities for individual and group volunteerism aligned with organization need, organizational need. Registration, onboarding, and scheduling is all being managed through an industry-leading program, In It Live, where you can go learn about and sign up for volunteer opportunities. I'd like to take a moment and acknowledge the generous support directed from the Baltimore Symphony Associates so that educational experiences like our midweek education concerts are once again free for all Maryland students and teachers, virtually for now and eventually in person. Our first midweek program, led by ASO assist, BSO Assistant Conductor Jonathan Rush, will be released on BSO Offstage next week. And while we are also planning an all virtual release for the December midweek programs, I'm very relieved to share that we will also shortly be announcing publicly an evolution in our responsible return policies. You'll hear it here first, beginning November 4th, we're going to accept proof of, vac of a negative PCR test within 72 hours of attendance for entry, making it possible for families with children under 12 and those unable to get vaccinated for medical or religious reasons to experience live music once again in our concert halls. And I, I know that some here are very anxious for this announcement. We will also begin the return of concessions. We are starting with drinks only, with lids and straws, um, but also on November 4th, we will begin opening our concessions again. And while we are excited to welcome back more patrons, including our youngest listeners, let me reiterate, our protocols and policies continue to be guided by data and informed by practice. We work closely with public health officials and epidemiologists, so this, these changes come after consulting and monitoring trends in cases in both state and local vaccin vaccination and positivity rates. It also comes after all of us, our ushers, patron support, and staff in particular, have had time to get used to checking proof of vaccinations effectively and efficiently. To make this process even simpler, we will also be launching a new digital option to preload and validate eligible testing results as well as proof of identity and vaccination. Effective November 4th, patrons will be able to visually show verification via the My Bindle app. So yes, there's an app for that. At this time, I want to address a very serious and sensitive subject, our commitment and eagerness to return to our second home at the Music Center of Strathmore. As you may know, our partners at Strathmore have been engaged in labor negotiations for some time with their ticket sellers, members of IATSE Local 868. And since IATSE has been in the news, if you're following uh, information from Hollywood, IATSE is the International Alliance of Theatrical Employees. Our stage crew is a member of, has, is a member of IATSE along with the stage crew at, uh, at Strathmore. And after helping to steer Strathmore and IATSE, Local 868, to the mediation table, we understand that to date the two parties have not yet reached an agreement. Against the backdrop of a potential strike action by Strathmore's collective bargaining units, we have also not yet reached resolution on the BSO's annual license agreement an agreement that sets the financial and legal terms of our season concerts at the Music Center at Strathmore. At the core of our conversation remains the BSO's position that we cannot compel our unionized stagehands and musicians to cross a picket line and work with replacement workers. We firmly believe that a resolution of Strathmore's underlying labor dispute remains the first step 
and a return to our beloved second home, a development that should also mitigate the need of such an impossible ask as to codify the practice of hiring replacement workers in our license agreement. We know that this has been a difficult time for everyone, in particular our Strathmore family, who are still waiting for the chance to experience our amazing orchestra in their preferred home venue. And while we continue to work towards our return, we pledge regular communications and everything we can do to make music available in any way we can. Thank you, and I'd like to turn the podium back to Barry and Allison for closing remarks. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Allison. The, uh, the last uh, item, as you know, we're also um, in the process of a search uh, for a CEO and president. Uh, I'll let you know we have uh, engaged uh, an outside consulting firm to uh, help us. Uh, we have assembled a rather impressive list of potential candidates. Um, interviews have just uh, begun, uh, and I'm quite hopeful that uh, this process will continue, and by about January we'll be able to uh, uh, identify and, and tell you all of a new dynamic and uh, inspiring leader for the BSO. Uh, again, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your uh, support. Come to the concerts, bring your friends, and uh, e everybody wish Strathmore the best to resolve all of their issues so we all can go to concerts at Strathmore too. Thank you very much. And that's a wrap, folks. Um, Thank you very much uh, for everyone tuning in online. Thank you so much for joining us and for everyone here in attendance. Now we get to go have a little bit of a social party responsibly outside. So let's go ahead and move on to that stage of the evening. Thank you.